thank the organizers for this uh, great uh, conference, and it's uh, great uh, to see everyone here. So today I will present uh, our recent work, joined with uh, Alice, on the large divisions of uh, long intersecting Bernoulli random walks. So for this talk, uh, we will have uh, those three parts. The first part is on the background. I'll start with uh, the low-range tilings which are equivalent to long intersecting Bernoulli works, and their partition functions give us uh, the sure symmetric polynomials. And the main result is on the large division of those long intersecting Bernoulli works as their theta analogs, and the last part is on some proof ideas. So feel free to interrupt me if you have any question during the talk. So for those uh, tiling models, like uh, this uh, picture on the left, uh, it's uh, uh, low-range tiling. It's basically given the domain. You tile it with uh, those uh, three types of low-ranges, the green one, blue one, and the red one. As a, on the right, it's uh, the domino tiling. You just tile the whole domain with either horizontal or vertical dominoes. So for this talk, I will focus on low-range tilings. Like there are many ways to think about those low-range tilings. Like you can view it as a pile of unit boxes. In this way, you can view it as uh, some surface, some 3D surface. And here it's uh, like a level one, height zero, height one, two, three, four, five. So it's some 3D surface. And another view I will use is uh, if you ignore any type of low range, like if you ignore those uh, green ones, then the red and the blue ones will form those uh, paths from the left to the right. <coughs> and those paths are Bernoulli paths, either jump each step jump by one. And for random tiling models, it's basically like given the domain among all the possible low range tiling of the domain, you randomly pick one. So it's just a uniform measure. And the key feature for those tiling models is this limit shape of phenomenon. If you take the mesh size to zero, then as you can see from those pictures, like the height function will converge to some deterministic height function, which is actually pretty smooth. And the limit shape will have some frozen region closer to those color, where the height function is linear. You only see one type of low ranges. And also those liquid region, the picture is very rough. You will see all three types of low ranges. And there is this boundary curve, which separates the frozen and the liquid region, which is called the Arctic curve. So here is the highly incomplete list of this limit shape phenomenon, first for domino tiling of rectangles, and then domino tilings of Aztec diamond, where this uh, Arctic circle was first proven, and then for random tilings of uh, hexagon domain. Uh, finally, in the work by Cohen, Cohen, and Prop, they prove a variational principle for the limit shape for any given domain. So before we state their results, I only need to introduce some more notations. So as I mentioned, we can view those low range tilings as uh, some surface given by the height function. Height is pretty simple. They are row one, two, three, and keep going. And those height function can be like uh, encoded by this so-called local density triple, like those local densities of those uh, three types of uh, low ranges. So the total sum is one. And uh, there is a bijection between them. Like if you look at uh, the x direction of the height function, if uh, it uh, passes through this uh, green orange or the blue orange, then the height increases by one. If it passes through the red orange, the height is the uh, same. So the x derivative is given by the local density of the green and the blue oranges. And similarly, the time derivative of the height function, like the so time is in this direction, is given by minus of the local density for those uh, uh, green oranges. So there is a bijection between the height function and those local densities. You can recover one from each other. And as a result proven by Cohen, uh, Cohen at prop, they state if you are given any domain, curly R, and then you rescale it by a factor N, and look at the low range tilings of this uh, rescale region R, then you rescale the height function by the factor N. The number of low range tilings for the rescale height function is close to H, that is by this large division principle given by e to the n square times the surface tension of the height function. And here is a formula for the surface tension in terms of those local densities. It's given by this formula one over pi 
times uh, the sum of those uh, L acting on pi of those local densities. So L is this uh, Lubachowicz key function. So for the talk, we don't really need those uh, surface tension. But the key feature of it is uh, it's defined on this uh, triangle domain. And uh, inside, in the interior of this triangle, this uh, surface tension is uh, strongly concave. But on the boundary, it's uh, just linear. And because, but uh, still, it's uh, concave. So by just a look at the maximum of it, we get the limit shape. The height function rescaled by n converges to this h star, which maximizes the surface tension. And again, it's because of this surface tension is only strongly concave in the interior. It's actually linear on the boundary. You have those frozen region and liquid region. A frozen region corresponds to the height function gradient takes value on those three vertices. So this is a result for the large deviation of the Lorentz tiling. It also gives the large asymptotics for the sure polynomials. Like for those uh, skill sure polynomials, it's parameterized by like take some Young diagrams lambda at mu, and look at the uh, S of lambda transpose over mu transpose, and, uh, and evaluate it at those values B1 up to BT. And it's given by some over semi-standard young tableaus, like uh, this one, you just fill it with numbers from one to t. And uh, vertically, those numbers are strictly increasing. Horizontally, it's long decreasing. And there is a way to encode those young diagrams by those particle configurations. You basically rotate those young diagrams in this way. And then for each of those young diagrams, you just project uh, each row to this horizontal axis. I look at uh, this uh, black Young diagram. If you project it down, the first uh, row is projected to this point. Second row is projected to this point. The relation is just xi is lambda i minus i minus one. So this is a bijection between Young diagrams and the particle configurations. So for Young diagrams, it's possible lambda i is uh, equal, equals to lambda i plus one. But for particle configurations, they just uh, lamb xi is uh, is xi is bigger or equal than xi plus one plus one. And so in this way, if you look at the mu transpose, it gives the initial configuration. And if you look at the young diagrams correspond to mu and also those boxes with one, you get a second row, a third row, and keep going. And because those uh, numbers, they are strictly increasing along, along each column, so, so those particles only jump by one at each step. So the upper really works. And for the limit shape, large deviation for the Lorentz tiling, they also give this uh, large deviation for those uh, Bernoulli random works, which correspond to Lorentz tilings on this strip. So in this way, the large deviation for the Lorentz tiling gives the asymptotics of uh, sure polynomials. And if uh, you are interested in, instead of a semi-standard young tableau, if you are interested in the standard Young tableau, where those numbers are strictly increasing along column at rows, one can also prove, and prove a large deviation that was done by Morales Park at Tassi. And also in combinatorics, people are also interested in the structure constants of those uh, symmetric polynomials, like the littlewood richardson coefficient. That has been studied a lot in combinatorics. And using the asymptotics of uh, short polynomials, we can prove uh, some asymptotics upper and lower bound for those uh, structural constants. So if you think about those long intersecting Bernoulli random walks, so they, they are determinantal point process. If you are familiar with Dyson Brownian motion, they correspond to beta equals two, and, uh, which comes from GUE. You may wonder if there are some general beta, what uh, they correspond to for those uh, discrete Bernoulli random walks. So that's uh, the topic of uh, my today's talk. We call them the Theta Bernoulli random walks. So to introduce it, let's come back to those long intersecting Bernoulli random walks. So this uh, more precise definition is uh, you basically start uh, n Bernoulli random walks. So each step, you just uh, stay or jump to the right, and then you condition them to be long intersecting forever. And uh, it can be encoded as uh, the, the growth process of those young diagrams. So each step, you just add at most one boxes to each row and use this bijection. And for those uh, long intersecting Bernoulli random walks, you can write down this uh, transition probability, go from x to x plus e. 
So each EI is either zero or one, corresponds to the particle state or jump to the right. So it's explicitly given by one over two to the n times this uh, ratio of the Vandermont determinant at x plus e at, at x. So explicitly it's given by xi plus ei minus xj plus ej over xi minus xj. So you have those uh, pairwise interaction between any two particles. And the main challenge for those uh, tra transition probability is uh, it's pretty singular if uh, xi is close to xj. And for the theta version of those uh, Bernoulli random work, instead of uh, living on those integer lattice, they live on this uh, theta dependent lattice, still x1 to xn. x1 is integer, but the gaps between adjacent one xi and xi minus one is given by theta plus some <coughs> integer number. So at first, you may feel this is a little bit strange why we care about this lattice, but it really comes from those uh, rescaled Young diagrams. So you refill it such that each box is not a square. It's a rectangle with one side one and another side theta. And then if now you project it to this horizontal axis, the first row corresponds to mu one, and the second row will be mu two minus theta, and then mu three minus two theta. So they live in this theta dependent lattice. And for the, the non-intersecting theta Bernoulli random work, the transition probability is exactly the same as uh, the long intersecting Bernoulli rat work, except uh, you have an uh, extra theta here. So which comes here, theta is uh, here. This uh, change makes sure the particles will not uh, pass each other. So if uh, you think about if xi and xj, the distance is already theta. And if, uh, if ei is zero and ej is one, then the difference will be zero. So the probability will be zero. So the transition probability is long zero bigger than zero only if like EI is bigger or equal than EJ. So this particles a gap is at least theta. Yeah. 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 Oh, this is the, uh, yeah, it's a theta plus Z. It's just uh, the distance is still, like if you look at the distance of the two, only this part gives the theta, other part still give one. So it's like a theta plus, uh, like it's a theta, or theta plus one, or theta plus two. So it's living on this lattice. Yeah. So the usual case is basically one. Yeah, the usual case, if you take theta equals one, it goes back to the integer lattice. So like uh, for the large deviation, we will, like the Lorentz tiling, we will also encode it by the height function. So given this uh, theta Bernoulli random work, we encode it by the empirical particle density with rescale time as space both by one over n. Like we just uh, encode each particle rescale by n, xi over theta by this uh, small box with height one at width theta over n. And then the height function is uh, just defined by the cumulative density integrates this uh, rho s from minus infinite to x. And we didn't use the delta mass. The good thing to use this uh, encode each by a box is in this way. The height function will be Lipschitz. At the gradient of the height function, it will live in this uh, triangle domain, like the Lorentz tiling setting. And uh, we prove uh, this following large deviation for the theta Bernoulli random work. If you take any edge, which is admissible, means it's uh, Lipschitz as a gradient living in that triangle. And the sequence of initial particle configuration xn, such that the empirical density converges to the one given by h, the x derivative of h, and the total time divided by n converges to s. And then we look at those long intersecting theta Bernoulli random work, starting from xn, then we can show the probability the height function is close to h, takes a log, divided by n square, it converges uh, to this uh, minus one over theta, times uh, this uh, rate function jh. This minus s log two is just uh, that normalization constant. And this jh, it has those two parts. The first part is exactly the same as a Lorentz tiling, given by this uh, surface tension in terms of the Lobachevsky function. And you also have this uh, second part, which is called those uh, free entropy, but it only depends on the initial data and the terminal data, those boundary data of uh, this uh, height function h. And the, 
the interesting thing is, uh, although those lattices, they look quite different, but the rate function only depends on theta through this one over theta factor. So if you are familiar with the beta ensemble, this is uh, some sort of expected. If you look at the partition function, the takes a log and divided by n square. It's only depend on the beta through a multiplicative factor. And once we have those large division, we can use it to derive the asymptotics of Jack symmetric polynomials. So we take, uh, to define it, we take a sequence of Young diagrams, mu belongs to lambda, and encode them by particle fun configuration y and z. And those uh, skew Jack polynomials uh, J at uh, lambda transpose over mu transpose, and it's uh, some polynomials which has this parameter theta. When theta is one, it goes back to the sure polynomial. I evaluate it as a B zero up to B t minus one. It's given by this uh, giant expression. So let me help you just pause it a little bit. So for the first factor, it only depends on the partition mu and lambda, it's explicit. You can just uh, do the study the asymptotic of it. And the key part is really this second part. This summation is over all those long intersecting Bernoulli work from y to z. And this red part is exactly the transition probability of those long intersecting Bernoulli random work. So we know asymptotic for it. And for this last term, it depends on this parameter bt to the ei at time t, which is uh, the encode if the particle at time, ice particle at time t is a stay or jump to the right. And this uh, extra function, the weight, can be written in as uh, some function of the height function. It's actually pretty smooth. So it can be dealt with uh, the Gersalov theorem. So if you can understand this part, which is through starting those long intersecting theta random work, we can get asymptotics of those uh, Jack symmetric polynomials. So this is a result. If you take the limits of the Jack uh, symmetric polynomials, you get this one over theta times this quantity J, which is the supremum over all the admissible height functions. And this first part corresponds to the surface tension. And you also have this bl blue part F. It really gives uh, gives the weight to depend on the parameter bt, and it's uh, something linear in edge. So this is an easy consequence of the large division for the long intersecting theta random work. Actually, what we can prove is uh, slightly more general than this one. So here is uh, the zoo of uh, symmetric polynomials by Van Dien. And uh, there are many different uh, polynomials in the picture. And what we can do is uh, something like asymptotic, some specialization of the McDonald polynomials. Uh, degenerated, we have the Jack polynomial, Schur polynomial, or multivariant Bessel function, which corresponds to those uh, spherical integral. But we cannot do uh, those uh, like a Whitaker function or whole little wood polynomials, which uh, comes from the uh, polymer models or vertex spin models. Okay, so next I will explain to you some of the proof ideas. Now it's a good time for question, if you have any question. Okay, so the result I present to you is uh, some large division for strongly interacting <laughs> particle system. At the, the proof, we will follow this uh, two-step framework. Like we will prove a large division upper bound by construct uh, some exponential martingale, and uh, tilt uh, this uh, dynamic by this uh, exponential martingale, which uh, allow us to get some upper bound. And for the large division lower bound, we will prove uh, some law of large number or hydrodynamic limit for that uh, tilted uh, system. And this pro framework now, it's a sort of a very classical framework, and it has been used uh, about uh, 35 years ago to prove the large division for the simple exclusion process by Kiplis, Ola, and Raghu. I believe many of us here have read this paper. They proved the large division for simple exclusion process for those uh, uh, on the circle with n side. And the slightly difference is uh, to prove this result, they also need to prove some super ex exponential bound such that they can replace those occupation eta i by the average on, over a box. 
And later, this framework uh, was uh, used uh, to study the large division of Dyson Brownian motion by Alice at Offer. As a main challenge for the Dyson Brownian motion is uh, this uh, trip <coughs> term, one over lambda i minus lambda j. It's pretty singular, but it makes sure those particles, they repel each other, so they will, will not uh, collapse. This singularity is a sort of uh, similar to the singularity of uh, our, those uh, long intersecting theta of Lully Ratton work. So I started to read this paper about uh, 10 years ago when I was an undergraduate uh, during some undergraduate uh, projects. Uh, and since then, I dived into many other papers on the large division of interacting particle systems and uh, read uh, this paper. And in the past uh, 10 years, I have read those papers many times. And every time I read those papers, I can always learn something new. And it's great today here, I finally proved some large derivation result for those uh, dynamics I can share with you. And so back to our long intersecting theta of Lully random work, <laughs> let's just rescale the time and the space, both by the factor one over n. Then the transition probability is given by this guy. So here E is uh, divided by N. So we have the ratio of those uh, Vatterman determinants. And then we construct uh, those uh, exponential martingale, which is uh, just to take any function GT. So it's on the strip region from time zero, zero to S. And the martingale is just defined as E to the sum of EIT times GT of the XIT, the ice particle at time T. And then just divided by the conditional expectation at the uh, the time t. Just by definition, this is a Martin kill as the expectation is one. And for the large division upper bound, we just uh, tilt our measure by this uh, exponential Martin kill. And to get the large division lower bound, we will just look at this uh, tilted measure, just tilt by this uh, exponential Martin kill. And the good thing is uh, if you tilt it, get the measure pg. It's uh, still some long intersecting theta of really right work only with uh, some extra drift given by e to the ei times gt xi. And we can analyze this uh, tilted measure as gets uh, some law of large number, hydrodynamic limit uh, for this guy, which allow us to get a large deviation lower bound. Okay, so let's start with the large deviation upper bound. So we construct uh, this exponential martingale. By definition, it's really just this uh, plug-in, this indicator function, the height function is close to some given h, then by definition, this is bounded by one. And next, we need to deal with uh, those uh, Martin Kill term, and hopefully, if the height function is close to h, we can pull it out of the expectation. If you look at uh, the numerator, it's actually something only depends on the height function. It's pretty simple. You can just uh, take the log and do some algebra. It can be written in terms of the height function h, as a time derivative of h times the gtx and integrate it. So this is a deterministic. And the hard part is uh, this uh, denominator. And for us to study this denominator, we will use uh, the so-called dynamical loop equation. I'll come back to this later. And to use it, uh, we need something strong about this gt. We actually need uh, this gt. It's uh, some analytic in a, in a neighborhood of the real axis. If that is the case, we can study this conditional expectation, take the log. It's given by this uh, contour integral depend on gt, and this mt is a steel chest transform for the empirical density of xt. So it uh, encodes all the information of xt, and this contour encodes the support of the empirical density. And once we have this uh, for numerator and denominator, both are in terms of h, then we can pull it out and it takes the infimum over all possible GT, which gives a large division upper bound. And for the large division lower bound, we need to show this uh, tilting strategy is optimal. Namely, we can find the GTX. After tilting, the probability of height function is close to H. This probability is not too small. It's not exponentially small. And to do this, uh, we look at this uh, tilted measure which is uh, the long intersecting bernoulli ratten work with this drift. And what we will do is uh, prove a uh, uh, large, law of large number for those uh, long intersecting bernoulli ratten work. Still, we will use uh, this so-called dynamical loop equation. And here is uh, the statement for the, the hydrodynamic limit. 
if we look at uh, the steel chest transform of the limiting empirical density, the time derivative is again given by some contour integral. And this contour integral only depends on this ft, depends on like uh, this uh, steel chest transform M mt at the gtz. And again, the contour enclose uh, the empirical density, but not uh, z. So it's just some equation of mt. It just uh, tells you how does this uh, particle evolve a long time. And once we have this uh, law of large number result, then given any height function h, what we will do is uh, solve for this uh, gtx such that uh, this uh, evolution of the particle density, the height function is close to our h. Then we get uh, under this uh, tilted measure, the height function is close to h, the probability is one minus little one. This is much stronger than what we really need. So in summary, like for both the large division upper bound and lower bound, the large division upper bound, we need to compute that uh, denominator, which is just the product of e to the ei times the gtxi. If you look at this expression, it's exactly just the, the normalization constant of those uh, long intersecting Bernoulli random walk with the drift. Uh, for the large division lower bound, it boils down to the proof of law of large number for those long intersecting Bernoulli random walks. So for both of them, we will prove them through using this uh, dynamical loop equation. So next, I will focus on this uh, second part. How do we prove the law of large number using those uh, dynamical loop equation? So here is uh, this uh, long intersecting theta Bernoulli random walk. And uh, this uh, dynamical loop equation is really this uh, following statement in joint work with the band beam. We find if uh, this uh, GTZ, is, if it's uh, holomorphic in a neighborhood of uh, this uh, real axis. So we get uh, this following observable is uh, holomorphic. If you look at uh, this expression, so it consists of uh, those uh, two parts. But if you look at them separately, like if you only look at uh, this second part, it will have a lot of poles at those xi. But the statement is really if you sum over those two parts, all those poles, they just uh, miraculously cancel out. So it's a really a statement of cancellation for those poles. And uh, this, uh, this uh, observable can be used uh, to study the dynamics like this guy. That's why we call them dynamical loop equation. It's also some relative of uh, loop equations, or sometimes it's also called the uh, dyson Schrodinger equation or Lacrosoff Le equation, which uh, has been first uh, used to study matrix models in physics literature, and then introduced uh, to mass uh, society to study like the beta ensemble or discrete beta ensemble. And here is a list of uh, some works using those loop equations to study beta ensemble or long intersecting or, or those discrete beta ensembles. So in the next, I will show you a three-line proof of this statement. And then I will show you, like although this is just uh, some observable is uh, holomorphic, it's not an equation. How can we use it like an equation to solve for the evolution of those uh, particles for our long intersecting beta random works? So here is a very short proof for why is this guy is holomorphic. If we just de define the partition function as a zx1 up to xn, so here like the randomness is really on those ei, if the particle jump or not jump. And if you look at the partition function and ignore those deno denominator, it's just multiply this variable determinant. As the remaining part, you can quickly check its uh, skew at its symmetric in terms of x1 to xn. So if you change xi and xj, you get a negative sign. And because of it, this property, we can show, argue this must contain this Vatermont determinant. So if you take the ratio, this guy divided by Vatermont determinant, you go back to this uh, partition function. It's holomorphic in those uh, variables x1 up to xn. So, so far you can just ignore those lattice. It's just an analytic function of x1 to xn. And this observable is nothing but uh, the ratio of those uh, partition functions. Like if you look at the partition function, you add some imaginary particle at the location z, and divided by the original partition function. Then you get uh, 
this uh, observable is analytic in Z. So this is where this uh, observable comes from. It just adds some imaginary particle. And now, if we look at those uh, dynamic loop equation denoted uh, by this uh, CZ, so the, the loop equation tells us uh, this uh, CZ is uh, analytic. And what we can do is, uh, like it has those uh, two terms, we can factor out uh, this second term, the red one, and uh, denote it uh, its expectation by AZ, which is the expectation of uh, this uh, expression. And uh, the good thing for this uh, red term is uh, this AZ, it actually encodes uh, the evolution of the particle system. If we look at its uh, log as the divided by Z, and now let's just ignore those expectations. Then we get uh, the expre expression after it takes a log at divide, uh, and the derivative by z is just one over those uh, numerators, z minus xi minus ei over n, and this uh, one over those uh, denominators, one over z minus xi. <coughs> so if you look at this uh, second term, it's exactly the Steelchase transform of uh, the empirical particle density at uh, time t. So it gives uh, mt. And if you look at the first term, xi plus ei over n. Those are the particles configuration at the time t plus one over n. So the first term is the steel chase transform of the particle configuration at the t plus one over n. Gives the first term, and also we have some normalization times n. And this whole thing together gives us uh, the time derivative of the steel chase transform mt. So if we can compute az, we can know how does the density evolve along time. And the second part is uh, if we factor out this uh, red term, we will have this guy. And for this uh, blue term, if we ignore this uh, one minus ei over n, just uh, subtract it uh, on both the numerator and the denominator, we get this gz, which is a good approximation for this blue term. And again, here gz only depends on xi. It can be written in terms of the steel chase transform at time t. So it's given by e to the mt. So the whole factor, now we can approximate it by this uh, function bz, which is given by e to the gt times gz plus one. So after this approximation, the good thing is uh, now this bz is uh, deterministic. It does not depend on this uh, ei. So we can factor it out from outside this expectation. At the end, we get uh, this uh, simple expression az times bz is given by CZ. And here BZ is given by this uh, expression. And now, so we can have uh, this uh, simple expression AZ encodes the evolution of empirical particle density. We want to solve for AZ. And uh, BZ is uh, this expression which is uh, explicit. And uh, CZ, thanks to the loop equation, we know it's holomorphic, although, although we do not know what it exactly is. And then for this expression, if you look at it, it can be viewed as a Wheeler-Hopf decomposition of the function bz. And you can think this expression, cz, it contains the residue of bz at infinite. It's a holomorphic anywhere else. And for this uh, first function, az, you can look at the definition. If z goes to infinite, it uh, approaches one. And you can think this az, it collects all the singularities close to the real axis. So because of this, we can recover this AZ just by some contour integral, take the log of the AZ. It's given by the contour integral of log of BW. So this uh, equation is really good. It tells us although we do not really know this BZ, we can still solve this AZ from BZ. Just use the property C is uh, holomorphic. And then we take the z derivative of the log az. We can recover the evolution of the mt, which is again given by this uh, contour integral, by takes the z derivative on both sides. So this is how we prove the law of large number hydrodynamic limit using those dynamical loop equations. So here is just some higher level heuristics. When we really implement this uh, argument, we need to deal with uh, some technical challenges First is like here, if you look at uh, time derivative of mt, it will also have some martingale term. So we will also need to use those loop equations to argue those martingale terms, they are like literable. And secondly, it's uh, in this uh, argument to use those loop equation, 
we require this uh, GT, which can be extended to a holomorphic function um, in a neighborhood of the real axis. And uh, so to, to have it, we will just uh, convolve everything like the height function. In prior, it may not be analytic. We will convolve it by a Cauchy distribution, like in the paper by Offer at Alice. So everything is holomorphic. But we need to deal with uh, those measures which are supported on the whole real axis. And lastly, probably the most, uh, uh, most uh, bad thing is uh, if you look at those expression log of BW, so we need to justify this log BW. So I didn't tell you like what we really need for dynamic loop equation. One input is GT is holomorphic. Another is like you need this log BW is well defined. So for it, we really need like those particle density. It can, it's between zero and one. We need those particle densities, they are bounded away from one. And so to deal with it, what we, we really did in the paper is we will cut the whole, whole region into small pieces. And on those pieces, so the density is bounded away from one. We use those uh, dynamic loop equation to get some large division. For those uh, pieces when the density is uh, very close to one, we just use some combinatoric argument because uh, the density is large. There, there are not many configurations. So we can just argue those uh, regions are like negligible. Then we glue those regions together to get uh, the full large division. Okay, so let me just uh, quickly summarize. So in this talk, I explained to you some large division principle for those uh, long intersecting theta but really random works. When theta is one, it uh, recovers those uh, low range timings. And those uh, large division results also give us uh, asymptotics of uh, Jack symmetric polynomials and also some McDonald's symmetric polynomials. But there are many other symmetric polynomials like uh, the picture I showed you, like the Whitaker polynomial or whole little wood uh, polynomials. It will be interesting to see if uh, this approach can be used uh, to prove uh, large division for those polynomials. If that is the case, which can then be used to study like the the law of large number or large division for polymer models or vertex spin models. Okay, and uh, finally, I want to see, although there are still maybe four months to Raghu's next birthday, I still want to see happy early birthday. Uh, thank you so much for many great contributions to math and great ideas. <laughs>